host Nathan and you are listening to or watching No Label Live and today we have a special guest who's going to talk all things leadership and what it means to always be better than yesterday. Mr. Ryan Hartley, how are you sir? Very well my friend, what an introduction that was, thank you. Yeah man, so I think the first time I got connected with you. I was watching an interview you did with uh, my man Luke. And then I realized you were connected with Heather. Yeah. I was like, let's let's get connected with this guy and let's uh let's see what he's all about. So thanks for joining me here today. Amazing. Thanks for having me, mate. I'm looking forward to a good chat. Yeah, absolutely. So what got you into leadership and coaching people to become leaders oh, good question i think um I've, I've done about 11 years public service in the in the police in the uk and um through my through my own development journey i i came across this um this little ted talk by simon sinek the okay. um the one way he shares the concept of find your why and it inspired me to to find my own why and reflect on my own purpose and it just it just dawned on me that I just love helping people, um, and a few years later, I got the opportunity to become a coach, and I just it just deepened my love for for helping people, and I think I think there is no better way of of being able to make a difference to this world than to develop further leaders to go out and do that because I think there's only so much impact that we can have on our own, and I think the the world is a better place for having more leaders. Um, and if I can do my small bit to help develop leaders that then go on to develop more leaders, then, then that is what really, really inspires and, and drives me to, to make a difference and, and help the world be always better than yesterday, just one person at a time. So my, my thing is all about labels and it's, um, we all have labels whether uh, we choose them or somebody else chooses them and they stick to us for whatever reason. So my question to you is, what's a label that somebody stuck to you that kind of shaped who you are? Um, and what does that label mean to you? Mm. One of the... Um one of the early labels that I got given was arrogant. And um, it took me a long time to get my head around where that even came from. Um, because there was nothing about me in my heart that felt that there was arrogance. I just, I just wanted to be liked, loved and accepted. And I couldn't, I couldn't work it out. Um, and actually in my development and my self reflection that as the time has gone by in my desire and desperation to be validated to be someone of worth man i used to tell people how good i was man i used to tell people all the things that i was doing all the achievements i'd had not to show off but just to say look i'm i'm worth something i'm you know i come from a single parent family background um, and i just wanted someone to see my worth you know and that label of arrogance i've never accepted it never accepted it um, because I didn't feel it in here mm -hmm. and now that I've got that self-awareness I know where that came from um, and it's one that I 
I can quite clearly reject. It's not a label that's going to define me. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what was that journey like? And if there's somebody who's sitting here watching or listening to this and they're like, man, I, I totally relate to that. Somebody said that about me and I, I never believed that in my heart. What's, what's something that helped you kind of um, get to the place you are now with that particular label? It's difficult. I mean, I'll be lying if I said it was an overnight easy process. And I spent, you know, a long time thinking, why do people think this of me? I'm a good person. You know, why can't you see? And I really battled with this sense of perception. And it's not until I started going within and focusing on who I am, um, Mm. what's important to me, my values, then I can really shut off that external noise and just go, you know what? I know that I have a purpose. I know that I have values and, you know, my, my, who I am is, is definitely not this person. And and then it's on me. It's on my responsibility then to, to show up in a way that means that people don't say that about me. You know, it's, it's kind of on me. I mean, that personal responsibility is so big. Sure. Anything that we do in life. Um, So what do you think that that's taught you and what tools has it given you as you've stepped into this, this coaching label and coaching other people? The more and more I've, the more and more I've thought about this, the more I've just stopped talking and actually just started doing, Mm. you know, the more and more I could just show people by my results and by showing up and helping as many people as I possibly can, I haven't got to try and convince anybody um, because ultimately in the long term, it'll, it'll all play out and people will see my intentions, people will see how I've helped as much as I possibly can and that I've given more than I can take. And um, absolutely, you know, let my, my, let my actions do the talking. Um, so if there's somebody listening to this and they're like, I'm ready to step into service, but I really don't know a first step to take. What would your advice to them be? Um, Just look for opportunity. You know, it doesn't, you don't need to, there's no sense of being good enough. You, it just starts with intention, the want and the will to make a difference to the lives of other people. And, and, and actually real leadership sometimes is in the shadows and it's in the small moments yeah. you know it, it's in the moments where we ask if someone's okay and when they say yeah i'm fine you are you really you know how can i help yeah. you know what can i it's it's in the moments when you do get them a drink rather than just getting yourself one it's holding the door open for someone it's going out of your way and i think that all that requires is setting the intention to want to make that positive difference to the lives of other people and the more you start to look for those opportunities the the more opportunities you'll see to do that and what was it like for you when you stepped into that first opportunity that showed up and you actually were able to recognize it mm. do you know what when i was younger i naively felt like to be a leader i had to do what was expected of me and to you know I I quite easily fit the mold and and I tried to be someone I wasn't and I had to learn very quickly that that wasn't me I wasn't being authentic and and actually you just the best way is to show up as yourself Mm. to use your values to give someone your time and just help them and the minute you, you know, for me in a workspace, just being able to see um, someone do that, that something that they didn't think they could do, man, there's nothing that drives me more than to, to, to help someone achieve something they didn't think was once possible. Yeah, dude, that, that moment is, uh, mm. that's an amazing moment for sure. Absolutely. Because um, you're creating that belief in someone else. It it was sitting there, but they just didn't know how to unlock it. And um, just 
you being able to be a part of that and say, look, I, I, I knew it was in there. All we had to do was get you to be able to see it for yourself. Yeah. yeah great description. I love that. Oh man. Um, so you've got three pillars of leadership. If I'm correct, you, you mm -hmm. into three pillars. So what are your three pillars of leadership? So, I mean, first and foremost, leadership is about putting your own needs to one side so that you can serve other people. And um, to be able to do that, to be able to put your own needs to one side to serve other people, you have to have a lot of self-belief. You have to have the self-confidence and the self-worth and self-esteem um, to be able to do that. Because leadership can be lonely, it can be tricky. And, and so, so the first pillar is all about leading yourself. Can you get the best out of yourself? Can you get the best out of um, mm -hmm. difficult situations? Do you have the self-awareness? Do you have the um, emotional intelligence to get the best out of yourself? And, and, and then the second pillar then is, can you lead others? So if you can lead yourself, you can show up. And, and now can you get the best out of um, the situation around you? Can you lead a team to, to a win? Can you get results? Can you help people learn? Can you bring a team together? Can you inspire them with a vision? Can you rally them with the inspiration and, and the motivation and the self-belief to, to go out and get that? Can you help them and pick them up when they fall? Because inevitably we're going to fall. And can you, <laughs> can you keep people going over the long term? Yeah. And then the last pillar is all about leaving a legacy. It's all about developing the next generation of leaders. It's about succession planning. It's about um, you know, being a good ancestor, really, and, and actually doing the right thing, not for here and now, what makes, you, um, makes your life easy as a, as a leader and a manager, but something that does the right thing that means that actually you know, you've got people coming through behind you and that are going to continue to get maybe better results than what you could have delivered, you know, develop the next generation of leaders so that they go on to go and do the same. Yeah, man, I relate so much to that. I, I think um, anytime that I, I think about what I want to create in the world, it really is about um, creating that belief in somebody coming behind me so they can do it a yeah. hundred times better than I ever even knew was possible. Wow. Um, I love that. And I would say just from the, the little bit that I've, uh, I've seen you since I've started connecting with your content and everything, I mean, you are definitely creating that just um, to bring your, your son on and have a conversation, yeah. just to, to watch and listen to that conversation. I was like, holy crap, this is, yeah. this is some deep stuff for for a kid to even be thinking about. So yeah. I would say you are um, definitely showing up and fulfilling that part of what you're trying to create for sure. Thank you, man. Thank you. What does it mean to always be better than yesterday? Ooh, good question. Um, it's, it's in the small moments. It's, it's having a mindset and an identity of someone that is going to show up. They're going to try their best. And they're either going to win or they're going to learn. And, and actually, um, there's someone that really puts themselves continually out of their comfort zone. Because that's where we learn more about ourselves. That's where we learn more about the world. And, and ultimately, we, if we show up with the, with the right attitude and the right mindset, we can't not go to bed having learned something new that day. It, it's, that's all it is. It's the mindset of a lifelong learner that always stays open-minded, curious, wants to learn more about themselves or others, wants to become better, mm -hmm. um, wants to help other people be better. Um, and it's to use the, um, the resources around them to their, the best of their efficiency is probably not the right word, but you maximize your resources whether that be your audio books, your books, your communities, mm. um, and surrounding yourself with the right people. You know, always better than yesterday is a purpose. It is a mindset. 
it is a community it, it, it's 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 many things but it all centers around helping yourself other people and the world be better and so you have a a podcast yes centered around that as well so uh, through your interviews with other leaders that you've connected with what are some of the key things that show up for each and every one of the people that you have a conversation with it's a really really good question and um you know the podcast is all about understanding the habits and the mindset of successful and inspiring people and and actually um a sense of it's bigger than me you know a sense of that purpose and is um you know is that humility that comes across it in many people that show up and want to help others um and another really good thing a really strong thing coming through is self-care lots of people discuss how self-care is important to them and sometimes that's journaling sometimes that's meditation exercise um taking a walk it, it, it's that self-awareness to know what you need to help you be at your best yeah yeah because if you're uh, not able to take care of yourself then you yeah can't. Uh, like you said, it goes back to the the key principle of you've got to be able to lead yourself before you yeah. lead others. Yeah, and I had to learn the hard way. You know, it's a big lesson for me around that self care because, um, you know, I'd, I I I love helping people so much so that I'll probably do more for others than I do myself. And mm-hmm. earlier on in this year, I I burnt out. I did too much. And in my reflection, I was like, where's this coming from, man? Like, why can't I rest? I know all the right things to do. Why am I not doing it? And, and, and <laughs> then it hit me, you know, when I first joined the police, I was a radio dispatcher. Um, it was my job to dispatch the police officers to emergency incidents. And 10 years ago, I was the lead dispatcher um, when, unfortunately, a police officer crashed and, and died on my mm. watch. And I took a huge sense of responsibility for that and for months it dwelled upon me around what could I have done differently if I'd have just done something differently it'd still be here um, and it took me a long time to deal with and what I've had to really come to terms with is that you can't help everybody you know sometimes you can do your best but you can't help everybody and, and, and being a coach that really wants to help people that's you know something's got to give so really trying to learn that actually I need to help myself first sometimes has has been a really huge lesson I've had to try and um, actually live. I know it, it's up here, but doing it is, is another thing. Yeah, man, that's uh, so interesting. We know all the right things to do. And yet we, uh, sometimes we struggle to, to make those things happen. That's part of why I created that, the challenge for July and made it uh, one step closer to your dream and your goal Mm. because it really is about finding some one thing, one habit that can really move you in the direction you want to go and building the discipline to just show up and take action on it. Yeah, I love that. Love that. I think the one thing for me that just reflecting on that, as you say, is just been the um, the signing up to Audible. You know, that one little decision of sign up to audio books to and from my place of work. I'm listening to audio. I'm feeding the brain. It's serving me. It's 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 taking me forward. It's taking me closer to the person I want to become. And you know, and and that's that's the impact of that over many many weeks and months and years is mm-hmm. huge for what is effectively half an hour a day. Yeah, man. If you uh, replace music with books, it can make a, a big difference, yeah. especially yeah. if you have a, a long commute. But mm. so, with that being a new a new habit that you're implementing, what's um, what's been the top book that you've uh, started reading or listening? Oh, I- uh, Brene Brown, without a shadow of a doubt, Dare to Lead was one of the best leadership books I've ever listened to. Um, she just describes leadership in a way that's human and that just, yeah, it's different. It's not like every other leadership book out there and um, they uh, really loved it. 
Um, I've not read that one, so I'll have to check that out. Uh, and we'll definitely drop that in the show notes and everything. So sure, yeah. check that out. Um, but that kind of got me thinking about, um, cause I, we are having such a good time. The time's flying by here. Um, what is your definition of leadership? It is being able to put your own needs to one side so that you can serve other people. And if we can do that and we can be the people that be the type of person that people need us to be, that protects them, that inspires them, that helps them feel like their work has purpose and meaning, that connects us with our teammates, that gives us a reason to believe in a better future, then those people are going to go home happier people. They're going to be better wives. They're going to be better husbands. They're going to be better parents or friends. And this is where, you know, being more purpose-driven, values-based is going to make a difference in the community as well. So the, the power of that one leader who's put their own needs to one side to show up with care, compassion, and kindness, it just changes and transforms lives, communities, community by community. And then that is how the world becomes better through the power of leadership. So with that in mind, what do you feel like is, is one thing that you can act on um, after we're done here today that's going to make you an even better leader than you are sitting here right now? What's going to make me a better leader? Yeah. That's a good question. It's a really good question. And um, I think for me, um, I've got a few things wrong this week. I've misjudged situations. And, um, you know, it's taking that opportunity to reflect, to, mm-hmm. to you know, make amends with either the, the person that um, you've had that interaction with or even with yourself and just know that actually there's not tomorrow's a new opportunity and um, to set my intention to be better. It doesn't mean that tomorrow I won't make mistakes. It just means that I hopefully won't make the same mistake. So it's just setting that intention to <clears throat> to learn, reflect on your day, slightly adjust the sails and go again tomorrow. Yeah, man. I think that it, to me that all goes back to action, right? And the, the willingness to take action and then, as you just said, to be able to realize that, hey, sometimes we're not going to take the right one, but yeah. – uh, the great thing about being in action is it's a lot easier to adjust yeah. rather than just sitting there being stuck. The only way to do nothing wrong is to do nothing at all. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was telling somebody yesterday, uh, we were talking and it's like, uh, why not take the action? Cause even if it gets you nowhere, um, uh, it could get you somewhere and you won't know without mm. an action. Um, and if it doesn't work, guess what? You're still in the same spot you were before. Amazing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we only got a couple more questions. So I want to uh, give you opportunity. How can people connect with you and uh, become part of your community? Sure. Um, it's obviously Ryan Hartley. On Facebook, it's my personal profile, or Ryan Hartley ABTY is my um, is my business page, and, and and connected to that is our uh, community, which is called We Are Always Better Than Yesterday, and it's a it's a community for like minded people who believe in developing themselves, developing other people to be better than they were yesterday, and it's you know it's it's a safe space, you know I think to grow is to sometimes be vulnerable to share you know, difficult times, challenges, weaknesses, and and that requires real trust and and a safe space to be. And I I pride Mm. myself on, hopefully that's what we've got there created. Uh, So if that's you and you believe in in developing yourself and others, then then you are always going to be welcome with us. And we are your community. Um, And I'm on Instagram, um, Ryan B. Hartley. 
Um, those are the main places. I've obviously got my uh, podcast, which you alluded to, which is always better than yesterday on, on all the, uh, the main podcast platforms and on YouTube channel too. So yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me on, my friend. And it's uh, it's been an honour and privilege. And, and I look forward to having you come and come and join me on Always Better Than Yesterday if you'll if you'll join me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so the last two questions I've got for you is alluding back to that that younger version of you. I want you to think back to what would you now tell that younger version of you um what piece of advice would you give him and then i want you to to reverse that and now think back to when you were younger and and what kind of advice would you give yourself now from that younger perspective mm. my advice to my younger self is chill out mate like I used to fight so hard to, to make something of myself, to prove my worth. Like I said earlier, just chill out, mate. You know, just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the small moments because you're good enough. You're going to just, you're going to do, you're going to, you, your life's going to turn out all right. You're going to do some good things. You're going to get hurt along the way. So just chill out and enjoy the ride. Um, and, in, and the advice the other way around. So my younger self advice to me now is, Never settle. Mm. Never settle because I am very fortunate and grateful to have what I have, but there's still more. Uh, there's still there's still more impact to be had. There's there's still more potential within me. There's still more potential in others around me. Um, never settle. Always seek to to maximize the potential of every situation or person that you meet along the way. And that's super powerful man um and then the final question is what does no label defines me mean to you it means that i am the only person that can say who i am i'm the only person that knows what's in here in my heart and actually no matter what external words that people want to put on me um i am myself I say who I am and I can change who I am if I want to. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. I think people forget that. Like the whole thing about that is we have labels no matter what. The uh, whole purpose is exactly what you said. We can choose to rewrite them at any given moment in time Absolutely. and create new ones for ourselves. So, I mean, I, I resonate with that a lot. I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to come on the show. I know that people are going to get tons of value uh, you, on today's episode. And uh, if you are watching, make sure and share this. Make sure and head over and join the community. And we will see you again next Friday. But remember, if you're seeing this, you're up to big things and when you're up to big things you must be patient you must be diligent and you must never never quit and we will see you next week i hope you enjoyed this week's episode of no label live if you know a friend who can use this message and find value in it make sure and share it with them today also go ahead and tag me of the episode. If you want to become a bigger part of the No Label Defines Me family, go ahead and connect over at YouTube and Instagram at the underscore Nathan underscore Todd and share this message with a friend today. Let them know that they are more than a label. They matter and they're one step away from their success. And remember, define you your label should always empower you and we'll catch you again next week